you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Prime Time, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, 
and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. At noon.
soon starts now. Breaking right now, a former Atlanta police officer accused of shooting and killing a man in a Wendy's parking lot has waived his first appearance in front of a judge. Garrett Rolfe is currently behind bars in the Gwinnett County Jail. He was transferred there last night after turning himself in at the Fulton County Jail. Nick Sturdivant is live outside of the Fulton County Courthouse in downtown Atlanta where people are right now. And Nick, a lot of people were expecting him to, to waive his rights. Yeah, good morning. Uh, well, good afternoon, Francesca. And again, as you mentioned, uh, Wolf did waive his first appearance. So that means that he's not expected to make an appearance, but his attorney may make an appearance via Zoom call. Again, as you mentioned, uh, according to records, Wolf is in the uh, Gwinnett County Jail. He's charged with 11 counts, including felony murder in the death of Rayshaw Brooks. If convicted of murder, uh, Wolf could face life in prison without parole. His attorney, Lance LaRusso, did not want to go on camera after Wolf uh, surrendered Thursday, but told us he believes the video speaks for itself and shows that his uh, client was acting in self defense after Brooks took an officer taser and pointed it at his client. However, District Attorney Paul Howard has said the prosecutors uh, determined the officer's taser had been fired and no longer presented a threat. And right now, we're trying to figure out what's next when it comes to this case and trying to speak with Wolf's attorney. Francesca. Nick, thank you. Meanwhile, 11 Alive has just learned that Garrett Rolf's stepmother has lost her job. In a statement from Melissa Rolf's former employer, Equity Prime Mortgage said they discovered Rolf violated company policy while she was transitioning to leave of absence. Yeah, the company said, quote, we value diversity of thought and respect Melissa's personal views and the views of all employees. However, when those views create a hostile environment, working environment, we must make difficult decisions to ways and it's not immediately clear what happened that would have violated that company policy but we are investigating and demonstrators gathered outside the governor's mansion last night and into the morning protesting against police brutality and racial injustice Georgia State Patrol and Atlanta police officers were outside blocking off the street where roughly 75 to 100 people were the crowd leaving just after 2 a.m., some continuing to protest outside the Wendy's on University Avenue, where Rayshard Brooks was shot by police just one week ago. And reports of police sick outs have been blowing up on social media. Interim Atlanta Police Chief Rodney Bryant tells the Associated Press officers started to call out Wednesday night and continue to do so Thursday. Because of this and low morale, a spokesperson for the Atlanta Police Foundation tells us their group will be given a $500 bonus to every officer that did work yesterday. And during a city council meeting this morning, Bryant said despite the number of officers who have called out, they're still keeping the city safe. I've checked with our 911 operator to see exactly where we are and how that uh, plays out in responding to call. Uh, we do have a slight increase in our pending, but nothing unique being that uh, our call volume has, been, has remained low for a period of time as, it, uh, as we go through the COVID period. We will not fail this city. Uh, officers are tired and, 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 and rightfully so and, and stressed. Uh, but the majority of us will continue to, to stand, uh, stand as guardians of this city to make sure that every citizen is, is safe. Meanwhile, Vince Champion with the police union told the AP one police precinct only had one officer show up Thursday morning, but did not say which precinct that was. Meanwhile, other police forces in Georgia are now welcoming Atlanta police officers to join their departments. We spoke to the Coweta County Sheriff Lynn Wood this morning, and he told us They've already hired three former APD officers and have received several other applications. They currently have 13 open positions. Sheriff Wood says his department is pulling all officer personnel files and thoroughly vetting all candidates. He adds that any hires will also have to go through a 12 week intensive training course before hitting the streets. And their Henry County Police Department posted on their Facebook page yesterday that they have some positions open as well. They listed the jobs along with the benefits, encouraging transfers to apply. All right, take a look at this right now in downtown Atlanta. Thousands of people marching to the Capitol as part of the one race march. Whew, look at them go. It looks like they're just arriving there now. 
They're demanding reform, justice, and an end to racial violence. Demonstrators first gathered at Centennial Park to pray together. After protesting at the Capitol, they will make their way back to the park to continue their rally for justice. Thousands there. And the march comes on the day set aside to celebrate the end of slavery in our nation. While most states recognize the day known as Juneteenth, it is not a national holiday, but efforts are underway to change that on both the state and federal level. Our Y guy explains what happened since Juneteenth was first celebrated in 1865. To many, it is America's second Independence Day, and yet a great many Americans know little to nothing about the celebration known as Juneteenth. Each year, the 19th of June brings a time to reflect and commemorate the end of slavery in this country. Here's why there is now a movement to make Juneteenth a national holiday. The celebration began in Texas two and a half years after President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, declaring all slaves are free. Confederate states were slow to acknowledge the president's proclamation. More than a quarter million slaves knew nothing about their freedom until the Union Army's General Gordon Granger arrived on June 19, 1865. Former slaves celebrated by reuniting with family members, gathering together at churches for prayer. As they spread from Texas to other parts of the country, they took their Juneteenth traditions with them. Over the years, Juneteenth celebrations have remained mostly within the African-American community. It wasn't until 1980 that Texas made it an official state holiday. In 2011, the Georgia legislature passed a resolution recognizing Juneteenth Celebration Day. This year, protests against racial injustice have pushed Juneteenth to the forefront. A 93-year-old woman in Texas is among the people pushing for Juneteenth to become a national holiday. Opalee's Change.org petition states that Juneteenth can become a unifier, recognizing that slaves didn't free themselves. Texas Senator Sheila Jackson Lee is leading the charge in Congress and says it's time for the whole nation to recognize a day that speaks to freedom and independence. Thank you, Jerry. And crews removed a Confederate symbol from the Decatur Square overnight. Just last week, a judge ruled to remove the Lost Cause monument. It was dubbed a public nuisance because of ongoing vandalism. Now, there was a crowd here as it was being removed. You could hear cheers and loud clapping. It had been standing there for over 100 years, and there had been several attempts to remove it. The decision to move the monument comes amid increased scrutiny regarding Confederate symbols across the nation. That coming together to defeat a symbol like that is a way to bring us together. And the moment that we're in right now with young people rising up is a, is a way of pointing to the future where we all can come together and create the world that we want. The monument will now be put into storage. New at noon, Gwinnett police have arrested the man accused of killing three homeless people in Atlanta. 29-year-old David Lee was arrested this morning. There he is there. He's accused of killing Timothy Smith, Curtis Cockrell, and Maxine McDonald earlier this month in Atlanta. We're told the victims were found shot to death at three different locations dating back to June 1st. And Jonesboro police are now searching for the woman who shot another woman in a Waffle House parking lot this morning. It happened at the restaurant on Terra Boulevard around 4 a.m. Police say the victim was waiting for an order in her car when another woman walked up to her on the passenger side and shot her. They say she then walked back to her car and drove off in a white Buick, Regal, or a Verano. The victim's name has not yet been released. Well, good afternoon, everyone. We're starting to see some clouds begin to bubble up a little bit here. Had mostly sunny skies through much of the morning, and now some showers starting to pop up here to the far north as well, some of which are dropping some moderate rainfall, as you can see. In fact, let's go on in up here. You can see over toward Fanning, Gilmer County, that extends over towards Sussex. No lightning strikes associated with any of these. We could see some embedded thunderstorms, I'm thinking, later this afternoon after about 1 or 2 o'clock, so we'll watch that for you. Temperatures already in the 80s, 81 degrees right now in Atlanta, 81 also in Covington, 82. In Eatonton, 82 down LaGrange, 74 up towards Blairsville. That's the cool spot this morning and or this afternoon, 75 degrees in Clayton. Here's your weekend outlook. It's going to be hot. You're looking at 89 degrees for the high temperature on Saturday, which is the first, ooh, the first day of summer. And Father's Day on Sunday will be a hot one as well. 91 degrees for your high temperature with partly sunny skies. Don't forget Dad. Francesca. Thanks so much, Chesley. A hospital accused of faking coronavirus results, putting everyone at risk. The disturbing allegations from nurses who work there who are raising red flags and risking their jobs.
today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact. Now to an 11 Alive exclusive investigation connected to COVID-19 right here in Georgia. We uncovered explosive claims against a hospital accused of creating phony COVID-19 test results. Investigator Andy Parati has reaction from that hospital. Your job as a nurse is to be your patient's advocate. We are their only voice. A critical care facility accused of manipulating COVID-19 test results. The allegations made by four nurses in court documents filed against Landmark Hospital in Athens. One former and one current nurse agreed to tell us how the hospital allegedly does it. They've asked us not to identify them by face or name. When they had somebody that turned out positive, they would redo the test so that it would come back negative and they would say that it was a false positive. Once our testing the proper way started coming back positive, we then weren't allowed to collect the samples any longer. These nurses say the hospital instructed staff to take samples from inside someone's throat, but send them to a lab that only tests nasal swabs, knowing the results would turn out negative. When you raise red flags, what was their response? They would deny it. Mm -hmm. Deny, deny, deny. This nurse says when she properly administered a test, her boss retaliated. I did the test and it did turn out positive, so I was terminated for not having a doctor's order for a test. And this is multiple, multiple staff members that are raising flags. Natalie Woodward and Brian Cathy are attorneys representing the nurses. On Wednesday, they filed a temporary restraining order pleading for a judge to step in. The number one purpose is to have a court step in and take this over. Have everyone tested appropriately. Stop all discharges or transfers or admissions until the right procedure is done to figure out how widespread it is. In a statement, Landmark Hospital CEO Marie Saylor wrote 11 Alive, we can assure you that we will vigorously investigate allegations and defend our hospital and its staff against misleading and false claims. The hospital follows CDC state and local guidelines as well as established protocols and procedures for COVID-19 testing. You provide the Multiple nurses still working there disagree. You're lying to your patients, you're lying to the family members, and quite frankly, 
for a disease that has killed so many people, quit being so careless. Landmark Hospital says it has no current COVID-19 patients it's aware of. Nurses tell me that's not true. A Georgia State University public health expert tells me that it is important to properly test patients to make sure the state has accurate case numbers. He says not doing it intentionally could be unethical and also dangerous. A judge could make a determination on whether to step in in the next few days. Andy, thank you. Protests for racial injustice in Athens have some worried about the spread of COVID-19 there. We're breaking down cases reported in the last month. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. Now to the coronavirus outbreak right here in Georgia. Right now, we're taking a closer look at COVID-19 in Athens, Clark County. Now, this is a look at new cases over the course of the past month. The line in orange shows the total number of people with the virus. And that teal line you see on your screen yeah, at the bottom, it highlights the number of new cases every single day. From mid-May through yesterday, Athens, Clark County averages about five new reports of COVID every single day. And COVID-19 cases continue to rise all across Georgia. The state announced nine, 911 new reports of the virus yesterday. For five of the last seven days, the number of new cases has been above average. That's shown by the dotted line on the screen as well. And we've been trending upwards since the first week of June. An Atlanta United player tested positive for COVID-19. The club did not name the player, but said he is asymptomatic and he's isolating. No other player or staff member has tested positive. And this is video of the club practicing earlier this month. The five stripes are working out, getting ready to resume the MLS season next month in Florida. The team says it will conduct testing tomorrow morning before training. And Renee Montgomery of the Atlanta Dream has decided to sit out the 2020 WNBA season to focus on fighting for social justice reform. Montgomery says that she made the decision after watching the video of Minneapolis police officer kneeling on George Floyd's neck. She says the decision was not easy, even though she knows it was the right one. The WNBA is scheduled to have a 22 game season starting in July. 1219 the current time we got some clouds on the outside but we have some sunshine as well partly sunny skies as you can see and it's warming up already temperatures already in the 80s right around 81 degrees over the city at least we got uh, again partly sunny skies dew point currently at 62 and those winds well you won't feel it much today at all uh, so it will feel a lot hotter i believe by this afternoon got some juneteenth celebrations to pass along to you if you're going out well Make sure you grab an umbrella with you, especially this evening. After about 2 o'clock, we could see some isolated showers or thunderstorms. Now, let me be brief. 
They're only isolated 30 to 40% chance. Not everyone gets wet, but 85 degrees our forecast high temperature. It will be hot. Maybe take a moment in the shade starting to see a few lightning strikes up here to the north. As you can see with some of these thunderstorms uh, moving toward Murrayville, uh, we'll be watching that now just about 15 minutes ago had no lightning strikes associated with it at all, which shows me that it's starting to intensify just a bit. I think most of your thunderstorms may be focused up here to the north and we're not anticipating any severe weather to be around at all, but that's something that we'll be watching out for as we head through the rest of the afternoon. Temperatures at 81 degrees in Atlanta, but it's 82 degrees over toward Covington, 79 degrees in Marietta. That's 82 degrees in Dalton, 76 in Blairsville. The cool spot now, Clayton at 75. Uh, watching this that area of low pressure that we've been telling you about, that pesky area of low pressure that has been around, uh, now moved up to the north and weakening a bit, but you can see where thunderstorms are starting to uh, begin to pop up now over toward the Appalachian Mountains. We're getting a little bit of that from in, in our extreme north, but we could see more thunderstorms begin to pop up. It's that summer type pattern that we'll experience and we'll lose that threat once we lose daytime heating. You see how the winds are light as high pressure continues to build in our direction. Uh, and so things will dry out a little bit as that area of low pressure continues to weaken as we head into the day tomorrow. Here's how it all plays out for us in the forecast track model. You can follow along with the time right there at the top of the screen. Shows partly sunny skies. The shower is starting to develop up to the north. We'll see area wide after about three o'clock where sh more showers will be developing. There will be some embedded thunderstorms here or there. That's why I'm saying take the umbrella with you. That threat will be with us at least through about eight or nine o'clock tonight. Once we lose the daytime heating, that goes away. And we'll start it all over again tomorrow with the sunshine, mostly sunny skies. We're going to hold on to that sun. There's about a 10% chance or less for an isolated shower. Likely you're going to be dry all day on Saturday. Again, with mostly sunny skies and temperatures will begin to warm up. I'm thinking closer to 80 degrees on Saturday. Father's Day looking at the same mostly sunny skies to start the day and then by the afternoon more of those clouds begin to uh, build in some cumulus clouds. So it may have the appearance of rain, but I think you'll remain dry again on Sunday. 91 degrees will be a high temperature. Cold front will begin to approach an area, the area, but won't get in here on Monday. We'll see the clouds increase and the moisture increase, but you're looking at 90 degrees for the high temperature. Uh, it comes in late on Tuesday. 40% chance for the rain will drop down to 88 for high and then the front stalls over us, keeping a better threat for showers and thunderstorms for Wednesday and Thursday. We'll give it a 50% chance, 86 on Wednesday, Thursday, 84. Francesca, back to you. Chesley, thank you. And COVID-19 is still here, yet many have gone back to their pre-pandemic ways. Because of this, one Atlanta resident has made it her mission to help keep her community healthy and educated by using the city itself. With minority groups continuing to be hit the hardest by COVID-19, Sherry Scott of Southwest Atlanta knew she needed to do something to protect the community that she loves. I went to a Kroger. I was one of the few people wearing masks. The cashier was crying because she was really nervous about having to work in a situation where people weren't wearing masks. It became very apparent to me that whatever the messages were about prevention and awareness, they weren't hitting my community. So Big Fat Small Acts launched on May 1st with about 15 community signs and put up all throughout 30310, 30315, the south and, and west side of the city. And then we have some amazing talented muralists in the city who have agreed to mask their murals for us. It's been amazing to see the power of art. You know, Atlanta, Atlanta is a city known for creativity. In addition to the mask murals and yard signs, Big Facts Small Acts have also launched their social media, making the facts of COVID-19 readily available and easily accessible. Our site is an easy way to, to get smart about how to protect yourself and community from COVID and then also really to find resources that can help other people as well. COVID has not gone away. I know people are tired of talking about it. It's continuing to impact our community. Part of the reason why COVID is hitting our community so hard is policy. It's an election year. We need people to be healthy and educated and aware going into November. So as people are out and about protesting, voting, helping each other, it's important that we're smart while we're doing that. We are more powerful together. And Father's Day is this weekend, and if you're looking for a good last minute gift, we've got some ideas. We'll have those for you as soon as we come back. In times of great uncertainty, 
some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam. Welcome back to the show, folks. The Father's Day is this weekend. And if you're looking to splurge on a high tech gift, Liz McLaughlin shows us a gadget that could make dad summer every single year. Maintaining a lawn in the summer heat is often a dreaded chore for homeowners. Someone in your family, and it's usually dad, is going to be back there mowing the yard at least every week, if not more. But now a robot can do the job for you. Works, the company that makes the highly rated Landroid, says autonomous mowers are getting more popular. We are seeing demand steadily increase, um, especially this year. There are a variety of models available from makers okay, such as RoboMo, Honda, and Husqvarna. Robot mowers are quiet, battery powered, and for the most part, run automatically based on a schedule you can customize in an app. It's like a Roomba for your yard. But they're expensive, usually $1,000 or more, and some say the setup can be a headache. Instead of buying one, some are opting for a service like Mobot, which has grown more than 160% in recent months, providing a no-contact alternative to conventional landscaping companies. And if it's a robot that lives at the property, it's never going to bring on contagions. For a monthly fee, Mobot can set up an automatic mowing system at your house. And you've got someone who can repair them and service them when there are problems. Convenience that might be worth the splurge for Father's Day. What dad wouldn't love the gift of no more yard work? With a robot mower, you can Whether set and forget. Week, My dad would have a fit. He loves mowing the lawn. All right, folks, thank you so much for watching. Facts Not Fear at noon. As always, you can download the 11 Alive app to keep you in the know on all the big stories. I'm Francesca Amaker. Stay safe and have a great Father's Day. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. 
we are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.